of the great things about a garden is that they attract butterflies and hummingbirds. And there are some really beautiful plants that you can add to your garden to attract those. Uh, we've come to Bloom's Garden Center here in Nashville with Calvin Owen. And Calvin's gonna tell us a little bit about some of the things that they've put in their butterfly garden to have a bounty of beautiful butterflies all summer long. Calvin, uh, I know we've got an echinacea up here that is a new variety. Yes, sir, that one is called Summer Sky. That's a new variety of the old-fashioned purple coneflower. Blooms most of the summer, uh, getting into September, and a long bloom season is highly recommended for a butterfly and hummingbird garden, so it's consistent and it keeps them coming throughout the summer. And then we come down here to Verbena bonariensis, mm -hmm. which is kind of an old-fashioned plant, uh, but a really good one for attracting butterflies. Mm -hmm. See-through Verbena is also called. Uh, it started blooming in, in April, and it won't stop until the hard freeze. Another good one for the butterflies because it is consistent, doesn't require deadheading, takes right. the um, weather conditions in Tennessee very well with the heat and the humidity uh, and all that. And it gets fairly tall, so it's good for the back of the butterfly garden. Tall, but like you said, they call it see-through verbena because it's light and mm -hmm. airy, so you can plant other things around it mm -hmm. and, and not have it block your view. Yes, sir. And then, of course, back here we have a really good native. Um, this is butterfly weed or Asclepius tuberosa, and this plant kind of does double duty. It does. Uh, it also serves as a host plant while it is a nectar plant for the blooms, the host plant for the monarch butterfly, which most people are familiar with. Uh, the Asclepius, it's a, it's a native. It gets about 24 inches tall. And through the summer, it'll bloom off and on. If you trim it off in the fall, it'll rebloom again for the late season monarchs to come through there. But it's always a helpful host plant. And then one other plant we have right down here with these kind of uh, peachy pink tubular flowers. Mm -hmm. This is called Agastache, and that one is Firebird. Uh, it blooms throughout the summer. It's great for the hummingbirds in particular because of the tubular flowers. Uh, it's also just, just a, a easy blooming plant for most beginning butterfly gardeners. Uh, so for hummingbirds, uh, the red hot poker is a nice plant because that blooms kind of early in the season mm -hmm. and it catches them on their migration north mm -hmm. in, it the, is. in the early part of the year. And that particular one is also a rebloomer, uh, which a lot of the old fashioned red hot pokers are not. And we carry a lot of the, the newer hybrids that will rebloom throughout the summer, which Again, consistency is a big thing with the hummingbirds and butterflies. Right. If it's consistent, they'll stay around and they won't go anywhere all summer. Okay. So we talked about the orange milkweed, and this is a little bit different kind of milkweed. This actually is going to have white flowers, and, I, and it will flower most of the summer, but I wanted to look at this one because right here at the top of the plant is a really nice mm -hmm. monarch caterpillar. Got, and this is a um, milkweed species, Asclepius incarnata, uh, the white swamp milkweed, mm -hmm. which is a perennial here. Uh, it, it's also a double duty plant, blooms white in the summer, which is great for the butterflies and hummingbirds. And uh, it's a host plant all season because of the foliage. And as you can see, the caterpillars are having a good time. Right, there are three or four caterpillars just on, on this plant right here that we can see. Mm -hmm. And then behind it, we have catmint. Mm -hmm. Walker's and Low Walker's catmint. Low. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna bloom, if you keep it cut back, it'll rebloom several times throughout the summer. It's great for the hummingbirds. Uh, it also adds a nice smell if you're kind of in the herby smells. And the butterflies like it, smaller butterflies, red admirals, painted ladies, they can utilize this better than some of your larger butterflies can. Right. Okay, and then uh, one more quick plant over here is this black and blue salvia, which is one of my favorite perennials, uh, a kind of annual perennial uh -huh. in this climate, depending on how hard a winter we have. But this plant's blooming now in May, and it will still be blooming when we have the last yeah, freeze of the year. It will, and, it, and it, it'll get larger. Uh, it's, a, it's a good perennial if you have a good amount of space because the plants can spread out decently, but they, they bloom, like he said, from, from May, even April, up until the hard freeze, first hard freeze in November, usually October, November, whenever it comes along. Great for the hummingbirds. Very easy care perennial, drought tolerant. It'll bloom through the summer even when it's hot and dry. Uh, so that's probably one of my favorite ones for the hummingbirds. And I know a lot of times people typically think that hummingbirds are only attracted to red, but that's mm -hmm. not necessarily true. Like you said, this is a great hummingbird attractor. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in most of my gardens or clients' gardens, we see hummingbirds on this purple just as much as we do on, on the red salvia and, and other things. It's more about that tubular flower right. that they can get their beak into. Right, right. It's, it's the flower shape more than anything. Hummingbirds can only use certain types of flowers because of the way their, their beak is made. 
Uh, so the tubular flowers are always going to be attracted to hummingbirds, whether they're red, pink, white, orange. Um, it's just the flower shape more than the color of the flower. As opposed to the butterflies, flower color is a little bit more important because they see ultraviolet light, which we don't see. Right. So your reds, pinks, uh, purples, and oranges, more your hot colors are going to be more attractive to butterflies. Whites are good, but you don't want to use as many whites because they don't see that as well. Okay, so I'm thinking that it's probably better uh, for the hummingbirds if you have these plants in your garden, maybe mm -hmm. rather than the hummingbird feeders that, that everybody has hanging out. Any thoughts on that? In my opinion, it is, because uh, most of the time people put the feeders out there and they don't maintain them correctly. And with the sugar water and everything, you can get all kind of stuff growing in that water that's not helpful to the hummingbirds. Right. Uh, and, and it's a lot easier, honestly, just to grow the plants because the, the plants don't require as much maintenance as a hummingbird feeder As the feeder hummingbird will. feeder does. Uh -huh. So I recommend planting a garden as opposed to putting up feeders everywhere. And lantana is a great annual. It's a great plant because it flowers all summer long. Right, and it, and it takes the heat and the drought. Uh, it's probably one of the number one butterfly plants. Right. Uh, because of the shape of the flower, it's not too big for the smaller butterflies and it's big enough for larger butterflies. So it covers a wide range of species. Uh, you have a, a unlimited amount of colors for the most part right and like you said there are uh, there is one variety that's, that's fairly hardy here uh, depending on your your microclimate conditions right but lantana is probably at least one of my top five butterfly plants uh, and it's also attractive for the hummingbirds and then in addition to lantana we have in front of it the pentas which mm -hmm. also is an annual but it flowers from basically the time you put it in the ground until the time it freezes in the fall yes and um, it is very, very attractive to butterflies. It is. That's again. That's probably uh, going to be the number one plant in my opinion for butterflies. Even though it's an annual, uh, because it's an annual or a tropical, it doesn't know a season, so it blooms nonstop. It's going to be attractive for all your hummingbirds, uh, especially your larger butterflies, swallowtails in particular, mm -hmm. which are very attractive. Uh, monarchs, uh, a lot of your smaller butterflies. Pentas is is going to be a must-have for any butterfly garden or butterfly container garden. Right, and then in front of that we have the Scabiosa. And that uh, is another very long blooming plant and it actually is perennial. Mm -hmm. Scabiosa is a perennial and for us here at the nursery we had several planted out in the ground that didn't even stop blooming through the winter uh, with the mild winter we had. Uh, so, that, so they start blooming in March and they won't stop, usually they don't stop for us until November, December which is good because there are several late, late season butterflies that still hang around into November and December, and that can be a good, very late season bloomer for them. And one final note on plants that attract butterflies, the butterfly bush, which mm -hmm. everybody I think is familiar with, with the long purple or pink or white flowers, um, that also is a great nectar plant. That is, that's, that's a good one. It's larger, so it's more attractive to butterflies because it sits up higher off the ground. Hummingbirds are uh, attracted to it and has a great fragrance for the garden as well. Well, Calvin, thanks so much for letting us stop by the garden center, take a look at your butterfly garden. Uh, we would love for people to come and see the garden here, uh, also his butterfly house. This is a great place to get good ideas for your own butterfly garden.